Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like planted by rivers of waters that bringeth forth fruit in the season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Praise the Lord to you this morning. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we want to welcome you today to the Reaching Out program. I am the program's host, Minister Rudy Roussel. This telecast originates at the Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple in the suburb of the city of Cincinnati town. Our address is 1150 West Galberth Road, and my pastor is the Honorable Bishop, Bishop Paul Alexander Bowers, who is also the diocesan bishop of the state of Ohio and the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. And we welcome you to this program today. It, our, it is our prayer that something be done or said in word or in perhaps scripture that would encourage those who are lost to seek the light of God's salvation. Let us pray. Father in heaven, merciful Savior, Lord, we thank you and praise you. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, for your love and kindness. We thank you, Lord, for just allowing us another opportunity to come before your divine presence today. We ask today, Lord, for a very special blessing. We pray, Lord, that you bless those who view this telecast. Let something be done or said, Lord, would encourage those that are lost to be saved. We pray, Lord, that they come out of darkness into your perfect, into your marvelous light, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you touch those that are downtrodden, that you would give joy unspeakable and full of glory to those that are saddened. Bind up, Lord, those that are brokenhearted, and to set those, Lord, that are captives free. Father in heaven, we pray today that you touch those who are sick in their bodies. Provide those, Lord, who has a special need today. Lord, whether it be in their finances, whether it be in their marriage, or Lord, rather than, or if it's just that they desire to see their unsaved loved ones saved. Lord, you know the nature of every person. You know the desires of their heart. And we pray, Lord, that you just minister to the needs of our viewing audience today. Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do. We ask as well, Lord, that you just unctionize your servant. Let all flesh remain silent, Lord, as we glorify and exalt you. Lord, we thank you and praise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus today. And for a brief moment, I would ask that those of you that have your Bible handy, that you would turn to me to the book of Exodus. And the scripture reading this morning is Exodus 13 chapter. And we'll be reading starting at verse 17 and concluding at verse 22. And it reads, And it came to when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistine, although that was near. For God said, let's pre-adventure the people, repent when they see war, and return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly warned the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillow of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a fire to give them light to go by day and night. And he took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. And the thought this morning is in verse 18 of this chapter. And I'll read it again. It says, But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. This particular passage of scripture is, is very familiar uh, to most of us. This particular chapter talks about the deliverance of the children of Israel. They had been 
in the land of Egypt in bondage in situations that was devised against the children of Israel. They was suffered hard tasks, burdened with the problems of the, of the Egyptians. The Bible says that in the first chapter, 70 people went in. And theologians estimate that millions of them came out. They had been in bondage for 430 years. The Bible tells us here in this particular chapter that the Lord was about to lead them out of Egypt by way of the Red Sea. Now, there are times in our lives where we're in situations and we have problems that uh, uh, oppress us and we're compressed and depressed by certain situations. We're sometimes in, 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 in our walk with the Lord we're in areas where we need the hand of the Lord to deliver us. And those of us that are baptized in the name of the Lord, that are filled with the precious gifts of the Holy Ghost, those of us that walk in holiness, we know because we have seen the power and the handiwork of God in our lives. The children of Israel had been burdened for century upon century upon century. The Lord himself had to harden Pharaoh's heart to get him to deliver or to release children of Israel from bondage. Time after time after time, the Lord displayed his presence and his power to Pharaoh. But in each circumstance, under every condition, he had agreed to release the children of Israel. Moses, the Lord's emissary, or the ambassador for the Lord, had sought Pharaoh on many occasions, telling him was what thus said concerning the people of God. And Pharaoh, time after time, ignored the warning of God. There will come in a time, a time in our lives, if we have not already been to that point or that period in our walk with the Lord, where we ourselves are going to have a wilderness experience. In the wilderness, there are no signs, there are no detours, there are no paths, there are no roads. Spiritually, you will be in an area that has been completely un explored by you your walk with the Lord will encourage you to seek the Lord with all of your heart while you are in this wilderness experience because it is God and God alone who is going to be able to deliver you sometimes problems we face are insurmountable it seems like sometimes after we're delivered from one situation, we find ourselves in something else. Time after time after time. But dear children of God, these things are not designed to beat you up or to burden you. Spiritually, they're designed to strengthen you, to let you know that God or the presence of the Lord is in your life. Certainly, I can do nothing without God. Paul said that he is the author and finisher of our faith. And those of us that are born again, we do realize that it takes an awesome, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing God be with you in the wilderness. Now, we know that Moses uh, uh, was raised by Pharaoh's daughter. And we know that Moses was raised according to Egyptian standards. But the handmaiden that nurtured him, that took care of him, was in all actuality his own mother. So he was very well learned in the way of the children of Israel. Moses himself once saw one of his Hebrew brethren under the thumb of a very hard taskmaster. The Bible said that he smote the Hebrew and Moses killed him. Scripture says that he hid him in the sand. 
Fearing that there would be some retaliation, Moses ran. He ran to the wilderness. The Bible says that he was somewhere in the back, some mountain of Mount Oreb. He was in a place in the wilderness where just he and the Lord was there to commune with him. Now, at this particular time, Moses was about 40 years old. And according to Scripture, Moses was on the backside of the mountain tending the flock or pastoring the flock of his father-in-law for 40 years while the Lord prepared to be in service to the people of God. So after a time, the Bible says that he heard the cry of the children of Israel and he sent Moses to be his ambassador to tell Pharaoh of the things that the Lord required of him concerning the children of Israel. So it is then, it is today. The Lord himself, the needs of the people of God. The Lord himself will deliver you from your situation if you learn to believe and to trust in the Almighty God. The Lord told Moses, he said, go down and tell Pharaoh that I said, let my people go. He had to harden Pharaoh's heart, but he hardened it for a reason so that he might be glorified in the thing done, so that the people could be a witness to the presence and the power of God in their lives. He bombarded them with plagues. He bombarded them with sickness. He bombarded them with death. And still, Pharaoh would not let the children of Israel go. And they suffered, and they suffered things. 430 years, sometimes in situations for two or three days, sometimes some things pop up on us where we can't explain or can't, we can't see our way through situations, and we start to complain. But here they are, 430 years in bondage, and the Lord finally decides to deliver them from this situation. We don't suffer the same persecutions that they did then, but nevertheless, Jesus himself said, if you reign with me, suffer with me. So Moses goes and he tells him, he said, Lord, who shall I say sent me? He said, tell them that I am sent you. I am that I am. I am whatever you need me to be. I am that I am. I am whatever you need to be. I am that I am. I'm whatever you need me to be. So certainly they were in need of deliverance. Isaiah called him wonderful, counselor, the prince of peace, the everlasting father. I am that I am. I am whatever you need me to be. He's a friend, friendless, a father to the fatherless, a mother to the motherless. I am that I am, whatever you need me to be. The Bible says that he led them through the wilderness by way of the Red Sea. And some of us sometimes are being led in certain situations that we find difficult to deal with, that we find that are overwhelming. We find that they have presented all sorts of problems. But if we stop and we look back, we can hand the work of God in our lives. We can see that despite of the fact that we have been in this for a long time, we can see how God has brought us through, how he has helped us even though we are in the situation. If you haven't had a wilderness situation, believe me, there will come a time in your walk with the Lord where you will have a wilderness experience. But the surprising part about it is that even in the wilderness, the Lord is there with you. He said, Lo, I'll never leave you, forsake you. I'll be with you till the end of the world. He said, If I be for you, who could be against you? So certainly with God on your side, whatever problems that we might have, whatever circumstances we might be in, whatever conditions that might exist, certainly they are not too much for God. Pharaoh was no 
problem for God. But he, scripture says he had to get honor. He had to be glorified in what he did because he wanted people to see his strength, his might, his power. He wanted them to know that he is the father, was the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He wanted them to know that the promises that he made to them, he was still going to keep them. He was still going to deliver them. He still was going to be their savior. He still was going to be their God. He said, I am that I am. I'm whatever you need me to be. With that in mind, Moses decided that he would do exactly as thus said the Lord. The Bible says that at the Exodus Egypt, he said there was through by going through by the way of the wilderness near the Red Sea. He said that he could have taken them by way of the Philistines, but if the people saw war, he said pre-adventure, they might repent. Repent meaning go back to where God has delivered us from. And a lot of times that is our problem. God has been with us. He has, he has delivered us from all kinds of situations. And the minute he delivers us, we go right back to where we was before. Lord, if you just get me out of this situation, I promise I will never do it again. Lord, if you just help me in this thing, I promise I will never do it again. But here we find that the people of God are murmuring, they're complaining, they're looking to Moses like he had already disappointed them and that they were defeated and they hadn't ever really had gotten started. But the Lord himself had to show his handiwork. He said, I am that I am. I'm whatever you need me to be. Now you must realize that to the north and the south there were mountains. Before was the Red Sea and behind them Pharaoh was fastly approaching them. And when they saw this, they realized, they said, Moses, you brought us out here so that we could die. We should have been better off if we'd have been left in, in Egypt. We'd be better off. And sometimes in our walk with the Lord, we sometimes question, why me, Lord? Why must I have to endure this? Why, Lord, must I go through this? The reason being is and see the handiwork of God in your life. Certainly, according to Paul, he is the author and finisher of our faith and the things that we must endure. Paul himself said he had sought the Lord thrice to have him to remove a thorn that was in his side. He told Paul, he said, but my grace is sufficient. Here they have seen the plagues, seen the Lord's handiwork. They've seen the pestilence in the land of Egypt and still they doubted the handiwork of God. The scriptures encourage us, he said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. In all thy ways acknowledge him, it says. And in part it says, and he will direct your path. Well, certainly here Moses knew what he was doing because he was being led by the Lord. The Bible says that are led by the spirit of the sons of God. And Moses was leading the people by the way of the Red Sea through the wilderness. The Bible says that on the north side there were mountains. On the south there was mountains. And before them was the Red Sea. Behind them Egypt was fastly approaching. Egypt being a type of sin and the Red Sea being a typifying the blood of Christ. The Bible told, says that he told Moses to raise up the rod, to lift his arm. He said he would walk up the water and that they will walk through on dry land sometimes we have to be encouraged that even though we don't understand the situation even though we don't know how we are going to get by even though we don't realize how we are going to get over or to get through that God has already worked this thing out for us he has always gone before us and he has already determined that we are going to be victorious we have to understand that he is the great I am. He said, I am that I am. I am whatever you need me. He's bread in a starving land. He's water in dry places. The Bible says he's alpha, omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the first. He's the last. He's the father. He's the way. He's the door. He's the sheep. He's the redeemer. He's our savior. I am that I am. Whatever you need me to be. 
We're looking today and we're in the cyber age today. Everything is done by computers. Everybody's going online. Well, I want you to know today that Jesus always was and always will be on the main line. All you have to do is call him to let him know, Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, I need deliverance. Lord, I need a touch in my body. Lord, I'm in a situation. Lord, I'm in the wilderness here. I don't know which direction to take. I don't know which way to turn. But I do know that I trust you. I do know that I love you. I do know, Lord, that in your appointed time, you will deliver me from this situation and you will provide. So Moses went forth and he done exactly like the Lord said do. He led the people across. The Bible says the walls, the waters of the wall were walled up and they walked through on dry land. Historians try to discredit that this, this miracle, that this spiritual phenomenon had never happened. But I chose to trust and believe the Lord and his word. And if the Lord said that has happened, it happens. And that is how things happen in our lives. He wants us to just trust him, to lean on him. Regardless of what point our lives we are in the wilderness, God is able to deliver you. He sees us going up and down life's highway. He knows that we've made detours. He knows that we're on ramps when we should have made exits. He sees our signals as we change lanes through life. The Lord knows. He understands. But if we learn to love him, if we learn to trust him, God will deliver us for a situation that we're involved in. Anything God can do where he may be glorified is a benefit to the body of Christ. It encourages faith in the people of God. It encourages love and encourages trust in the people of God. And they knew because they'd seen the handiwork of God in their lives. In spite of the fact they complained, in spite of the fact that they were stiff-necked, in spite of the fact that they were stubborn, God never ceased to be God. The Bible says he was a pillow by day and a pillow of fire by night. He led them during the day, and he was a light to them at night. It is not God's desire that his people walk around in darkness. The Bible says he's the light of the world. We are light. And when people see us, they see the godliness in us that is imputed by the Spirit and the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. God had this thing already worked out. He told Moses to go through hundreds upon thousands of Egyptians pursued the children of Israel. The Bible says, and they walked through on dry land. Could you imagine what that would have been like to, to visualize that in your mind? What a spectacle that must have been to see the waters walled up as they crossed the Red Sea people of Israel that was a type of baptism being baptized according to scripture in the Red Sea God knew what he was doing in the lives of his people because he said I am that I am I am whatever you need me to be I am that I am I'm whatever you need me to be he told him he said go through after they had made it tide, the Egyptians were fast approaching. Could you imagine what had gone through the minds of the people of God? They said, Lord, you've brought us this far. It may have been better for us to just have stayed in Egypt and to endure the hardships of what it was about to approach now, Lord. Still, they were not able to visualize in their mind that this God was so much greater and so much mightier, mightier than Pharaoh. That in their hearts, that it would have been better off to just be left where you are. And that's how it is sometimes in the lives of the people of God. We're so consumed with the problem, we're so consumed with the situation that we sometimes don't realize or focus upon the Lord, knowing that he's there to deliver us. We are concentrating on the problem rather than the problem solver. And God is there to solve your problems. He goes on a little later on. He, Moses tells him, stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes when you're unable to get out of a situation, you need to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes when you're overwhelmed with bur and burden, sometimes when you're 
just don't know which way to turn, what to turn to, or who to turn to. You need to turn to the God of your salvation, and you will realize that all you need to do is trust in the Lord and stand and see the salvation. We're not quite through with this message. And perhaps at a later telecast, we'll, we'll revisit this topic. But for those of you today who are in the city of Cincinnati, I would cordially invite you to visit our church. Our church's location is in the fair city of Cincinnati. Our church's address is 1150 West Galbraith. That's Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple. And our pastor is the Honorable Bishop Paul Alexander Bowers. Our order of service has followed. Sunday morning worship is at 1115. Our Sunday school is at 945. We have brotherhood and sisterhood prayer at 7 o'clock on Monday nights and a Holy Ghost receiving service at 8 o'clock on Mondays. Wednesday night, 7.30 is adult Bible class and there's a youth and young Bible class at the same time in the Covell Chapel. We encourage you to visit with us, to hear the truth of the gospel preach. May God bless you this week. And may he bless you royally in the name of the Lord Jesus is our prayer for you. Father, we thank you for those that have tuned in. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name that you just bless the people of God. We ask, Lord, that you just encourage their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.